Welcome to the Wizards of Ecom, your no-fluff playbook for online success. Each episode is fully packed with actionable tactics you can implement in your business right now. Take your life to a higher level and excel in your online success. It's time to work on you and your business. Let's do this. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Wizards of Ecom. This is your host, Naomi, and today we are joined by Gabriel Caseros who is an Amazon advertising expert at Better AMS. He's also a fellow Amazon seller. Hello, Noemi. Extremely excited to be back and discuss Amazon PPC strategy. Extremely excited to have you back. And the reason why I had you on the show, you also gave a brilliant presentation last week to our PPC-focused uh, Zoom meetings or group as well. And it was about specifically about how to implement uh, brand keywords into your keywords into your PPC strategy. And also you presented in person, like I think two weeks ago here to, to in Miami to our group, which I couldn't attend it. I heard it was amazing. So <laughs> I was like, yes, let's have Gabriel on the show. So thank you once again for joining us. No, thank you for having me. And uh, yes, we have had great presentation. The, we the Wizards of Income Group, it's extremely knowledgeable. And the questions they were asking, we're really in the weeds, so hopefully we get in the weeds today as well. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. And today's topic is going to be about brand analytics and how to use brand analytics as a research tool to create product targeting campaigns. And I'm so, so happy to have you on the show today specifically about this topic because um, now full disclaimer, I am also like very... I love PPC and I love to up my game all the time, you know, I'm not a PPC here, but I'm an Amazon seller. And as you are also an Amazon seller, you can, I hope, relate to the simple fact that you're always in the lookout to what to do better with your PPC. And honestly, on brand analytics, there is not much <laughs> out there. So today, I hope that we are going to learn a lot. I mean, I'm certain that we're going to learn a lot from you. And Okay, no more talk. First question. So everyone is on the same level. <laughs> what is brand analytics and how or who is eligible to have it? Okay, so everyone selling in the US whose brand registered is eligible to have brand analytics. If you don't see it yet on your seller central, you can go ahead and open a case and you should have it like in no time, maybe two or three days. Um, why are we attaching or sticking brand analytics to PPC today? Well, BPC usually represents around 30 to 40% of, of sales happening on Amazon. So the fact that you can use a tool like brand analytics to leverage your PPC sales or do uh, research in order to increase your PPC sales is extremely important. And why are we talking about brand analytics today? Well, there are lots of tools out there, but usually uh, when you be, when you have been selling on Amazon for a while, you rely on two things extreme, uh, a lot. You rely on your PPC data, which is your own data. It's data from people that are looking for the keywords you want to rank on. Uh, uh, you're, you're relying on uh, you know which search terms you have converted on so that you can double down on them or you can slow down on them depending on how well you're converting or if you're converting or not converting at all. And uh, brand analytics is one of those tools that is data that is coming from Amazon. It's data that, that Amazon is giving you. And we are going to talk today about Amazon search terms specifically, because they give you a lot more data on their mm -hmm. brand analytics. They give you demographics, like what's what's the age group that is uh, that is looking at your products, purchasing your products. What is what is the what is the gender that is looking at your products? What is the marital status? Like, is this person married, single? And all of those, all of all of those. Uh, Insights can help you set up uh, Google ads, can, can help you set uh, Facebook ads. Um, and I don't, want, I don't want to expand too much into that, but I just want to give a brief idea on how underestimated brand analytics is and, and how important and how exact the data can be versus you know third-party third party softwares. So definitely let's get the most out of, out of it and let's, let's get in the weeds with um, Amazon search terms today. I would, I would actually add to that. No, let's expand as much as possible because, you know, as I was saying, there's no info out there. Everyone thinks that, okay, either they're not sharing, either they think that it's not important, but just you were saying, yeah, those are your clients or Amazon's clients in this scenario, but those are people buying, purchasing from you and you have all the data and it's like, why not use it? So definitely let's get as deep as possible into roots and understand why and how can brand analytics help. Yeah, and I and I wish brand analytics would give us more data in this uh, Amazon search 
term staff. Um, so where do you find it? Well, on Seller Central, on the homepage, you will want to go to the top left corner where you see the three lines, because uh, now we have a new menu. <laughs> And you'll want to go to brands uh, and then click on brand analytics, right? The first one that should display should be the Amazon search terms tab. And Amazon will request you there to put in a search term or an easy. I like to do search terms because Amazon will give you a um, display on the search term and similar search terms within the search you put there. And it will give you the search frequency rank and it'll give you the top three ASINs on the well, for that search term. Now, I wish they would give you 10 search, 10, 10 ASINs, right? Instead of just three. Amazon is currently giving you just three. So that's 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 currently what we can work with right now. Um, and what what's the data that we can use to take a look at it and, and get some uh, uh, insights to use on PPC? Well, we got both click share and conversion share columns. Now, these are the top three products ranked for each search term. So if we would search for something like uh, polarized sunglasses, man, which is a competitive niche, uh, there's a there's a there's little little maybe little to no brand loyalty. Maybe I get, maybe I'm getting in an issue there if we start talking about Oakley and uh, all of these sunglasses brands. But the point is, you will see click share and conversion share. So you will see that. Uh, XYZ product has a click share of 10% and the conversion rate is, let's say, 4%. If you see that pattern on the top three products, that basically means that the, that the conversion and the impression share of the products in that search term is a split mm -hmm. across the products in the first page, right? Because there's nobody like dominating the search term with a 40% click share and a 30% conversion share, okay? That is good and bad. Why? Because it would be a lot easier to uh, find products that have 30 to 40, maybe 40 to 60 percent conversion share and impression share, uh, because you can target only those because, you know, all the traffic going to that keyword is going there or not all, but a, a great portion of it. Right. Uh, this could even help you if we if we uh, step out a little. This could help you even identify how how much of, of how much a how much competitive a keyword is or certain categories are based on how these top three ASINs are dominating, right? Uh, so if you are in a stage where you think you, you you would want to expand your targeting but you are not sure, taking a look at this can tell you whether a certain ASIN is completely dominating the search term or the traffic is split across more than just three ASINs in the, in the in the in the in the search term and you can go ahead and, and bid a little bit on each of these i would i would start there and and um, maybe let's take it from there with with the questions you have that's brilliant i in the meantime you know what because you are just opening up brand analysis i also have it on my end like open up so also to our listeners if you're going to listen to this podcast and you have brand analytics which i certainly hope that you do because it's amazing um i would also suggest to do the same thing things um yeah it's uh, otherwise it might get dry <laughs> you know other guys it's my bad. i love yeah. when when you're like reading off like charts you know <laughs> to people so <laughs> This is going to be engaging, so open up your brand analytics and when we're going through this, because I think this is how you're also learning, just go through and see what we're talking about. So first of first, because you shared a ton of information there, okay, you were saying that um, three ASINs are, for example, because we are going to talk about, um, um, wait, what was the topic for today? Oh, great. <laughs> how to find product targeting campaigns, there you go. Yeah. All right, so how to find how to make product targeting campaigns and here also, as you were mentioning, you have available three products or three ASINs. What's Correct. next? All right, so if we do if we do a search on the Amazon search terms tab, like polarized sunglasses for men, we will get displayed not just that keyword and the top three ASINs for that keyword, but also um, keyword combinations for the search term for the search term we used. So I got here polarized sunglasses man with a search frequency rank of 4,345. Just so you know, guys, uh, the search term frequency rank works pretty much like the best, the best sellers rank, the BSR. So the lower the, the, the frequency is, the higher the search volume is. I don't know why Amazon likes to, likes to, uh, ups and down things. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but that's the, that's just the way it's set up, right? So the lower the search frequency rank, the higher the search volume is. All right, and we will. And, and I got several keyword combinations here. I got Ray Ban sunglasses for men polarized. I got uh, sunglasses men polarized. Sunglasses polarized UV protection. Okay, and each of these is giving me the top three reasons for each search terms. So what what do we want to do here or how, how do we want to take it from here? Well, it's good on one hand that Amazon is just giving us the top three ASINs uh, per search term because usually most of the traffic goes to these top three listings, right? Uh, when we do a search on Google, we usually tend to click on the top three results. Uh, if you are going um, a little deeper than that, it's probably because you either didn't use the keyword uh, that you that 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 you were not using the right keyword, or you're just using such a long tail keyword that your search is not even it's that doesn't it doesn't even exist yet what you're looking for. Um, so this is extremely simple and extremely easy to navigate because on the top right corner you can actually download the data and uh, handpick three to four ASINs that you want to target. And why do we want to target three to four ASINs? Well, the conversion rate on keyword targeting is not the same as the conversion rate on product targeting. We have seen that conversion rate on product, product targeting is at least two to three times lower than the conversion rate on keyword targeting. So that means that you don't really want to expand your product targeting too much at the very beginning, because first, you don't have any data on how those will convert. And second, the conversion rate is going to be lower than than the than the than the conversion rate on keyword targeting. So, um, brand analytics is a great tool to start product targeting because, on one hand, you will take a look at the top uh, products for each search term that is that is relevant to your category, and you won't feel overwhelmed trying to scrap everything on the first page on try or trying to target all of your best sellers using X Y Z tool. Here is simplified for you so that you start your uh, product targeting campaigns in the most easiest and simplest way. Now, if we, if, if you want to get a little deeper, yes, you could do the top three by um, the top three by search term, but you will see that also the search frequency rank starts going up, which means that the rest of keywords have a lower and lower search volume. Now, I have good news. The good news that the good news that the conversion rate is lower on product targeting is that the CPC is also way lower. So while you would pay, let's say, a dollar and fifty cents to show up for a certain keyword, a certain top keyword in your category, you could you could pay you could start your product targeting campaigns for as low as ten cents mm -hmm. and see what happens, right? Because the ad inventory is also um, a lot bigger. What I mean by that is. When you go within a product detail page and you scroll down and you see all of these carousels, that's where your product will is likely to show up. And you will see that you can see a ton of them. Like you can mm -hmm. uh, click on the carousels three times in a row, four times in a row, you will see more products and more products and more products. Uh, in categories like decor, this works pretty well because that is a category where, where people will not click on the top three, four results. You will actually navigate a lot more, especially if you don't really know what you want yet. And if you are if you are adding value by sharing some trendy decor or, or uh, something so rare in the market that people would click on it, it could cost you potentially 10 cents if you launch a, a campaign with that strategy. That's a great idea. And actually brought up uh, my next question, which is in this scenario, it does also matter as far as I understood, because you were mentioning decor, in which category you are selling, for example, and also the intent of the keywords, because when decor let's say how it's called like fluffy pillow let's let's add this as a search term right fluffy pillow and then for fluffy pillow it's going to come up a ton of things if you're not specified for example gray fluffy pillow with i don't know with i don't know <laughs> great fluffy pillow let's put it that that way then it's going to come up a ton of other products as well maybe that are not gray maybe that are not fluffy maybe that are like there are like a ton of uh, products there so they're would you recommend here in this scenario still start with the 10 cents or would you go higher and you would know exactly which are the keywords that you want to target and which are the products that you want to target? That's that's a great call. So first of all, um, let's let's start by, by, by uh, specifying that if you're going to put a keyword on the Amazon search terms on brand analytics, make sure it's one of your uh, top keywords or your most relevant keywords. 
don't go there and type home decor because you will you will get the search the asins and search term combinations for home decor but they won't be necessarily relevant to your product mm -hmm. and potentially if you target those at even a 10 cents like you would waste a lot of money until you start converting so uh, going back when you type a search term on, on the Amazon search terms tab on brand analytics, make sure it's one of your top three, top five relevant keywords. I wouldn't go any under than that because you start not just having uh, lower search volume. Every time you go deeper, you have lower search volume and you also have um, and you also have less chances to convert because really the traffic is going to the top basins. Um, second, uh, yeah, so yeah, I wouldn't get, it, it really depends. And it's kind of tricky in those categories because you don't want to get too broad because that way your conversion rate would, will be lower. Uh, but at the same time you want to, because put the, the, the upside is so, is so awesome that you could potentially bid five cents and at some point convert. It really, it really would depend on um, what stage you're at. So mm -hmm. if you have a product that has, I don't know, 500 plus reviews, a thousand plus reviews, and you want to expand your targeting, but you want to make sure that that you go more incisive than broad on it. I would go. I would be one of those people to you know search for I don't know living room decor, mm -hmm. and scrap those top three maybe top three maybe six seasons, and go ahead and bid ten cents on them, twenty five maybe. And if I start competing, I would raise it up to fifty cents. Uh, but if I'm just getting started and my product is kind of new, I would rather focus on the most relevant keywords because I know I will convert best on them. I I need to keep building a good sales history. At the same time, my metrics need to look really healthy for Amazon to give me more exposure. And then at a, at a, at a, at a, at a stage in the future, I would go ahead and expand it. That I, I would separate those, those two strategies right there. Yeah, that's brilliant. I love that you also like give a great, great tangent of, okay, it's not only that, but you have to take care of, okay, are you just starting out with the product? Which stage are you? Which stage is your product in? Are you? Do you have five hundred uh, reviews? Do have um, ratings? Do you have a thousand ratings? Do you have more? You know. So this all what we're sharing here it's going to be ap applicable or applicable? How do you call it? Applicable? I'm yeah. asking. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> For a specific okay, what what your plan and what your strategy is? You know. And here, as you were mentioning. Okay, let's get back to, you have the three ASINs there. You have for one keyword, the three ASINs. What's next? How are you going to approach to target those? Is it going to go the same amount of, of uh, CPC? Is it going, or based on what do you say, okay, these are the keywords or this is the keyword that I should spend most or like budgeting wise, how would you? Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the funniest part. <laughs> that's the funniest part: setting up the campaigns. Okay, yep. so let's say, yep. let's say that you uh, use one of your uh, most important, most relevant keywords, and you pick three ASINs. You handpick them. You didn't you didn't you didn't go crazy, and you handpick three ASINs. Um, if you really want to do it the way I would do it, li listen up, listen up, because uh, <laughs> I would do it. I would do it this way. I would do one campaign by async because i just got three of them and i want to see how they perform but i would like to see how they perform individually rather than uh as a group because mm -hmm. in case in case in case an async converts really well another dozen i can limit the budget on the one that that doesn't do well and i can increase the budget even increase bits and increase budget on the one that's doing well so i would do i would go to campaign manager create campaign sponsor products I would do a sponsor products product targeting campaign. Usually for these kind of campaigns, we uh, we discussed on the on the last training how important no, uh, uh, a, a naming system and nomenclature system help filters help helps filtering results. So I would name these something like competitor ASIN, the competitor ASIN, and then uh, sponsor products something like SPPT for product targeting. So then I can filter and take a look at it, and I would target that ASIN to the products and advertise the products within the product line that I have available. So to, to, to specify that a little more, let's say I want to target a certain iPhone case that's doing very well, but I have other three phone cases in the same model. So what I'll do is add the three models that I have available so that I show us so that I show up up to three times in that sponsored products carousel. Because if I just do one, 
I'll just get one placement. But if I could, I could get up to four because I have four variations or up to five, I would, I would add those five to cover as much space as I can. And uh, that is on the sponsored product side of things because I could, we could also um, dive into the sponsor display side of things, and it would look, it would look pretty similar. So, uh, competitor easing, easing name, sponsor display, PT for product targeting, and uh, same exercise, right? The product we want to target is um, that competitor easing, and we, we, this is just the first easing. We're, we're just not done with the other two, but on this one, we want to add that easing, and we want to advertise. Uh, the variations that we have that makes sense, right? We don't want to advertise all of the all of the catalog there, but the variations that make sense to that product. So we would we could we could potentially cover everything on this competitor detail page, um, I, and we can again campaigns by ASIN so that we can scale budgets and bids accordingly. Yeah, I love it. I love that also very. I hear very surgical, like I, this is what I love about uh, better AMS and also Destiny. Everything is super surgical. No, that's not the way how to do it. This is the way and it has to be named. And I love that. You know why? Because most of the time people, when they are just starting out, they have no clue what they are doing unless they might like um, deliberately have an agency who already is doing this for them. But usually people don't know, like you were talking about how to name things, how to budget, how to create complaints and this way. I actually love that you were saying super surgically, okay, these are the steps, you know, because people are not aware of that. And that's something that it will take off huge headaches in the future for you. I, yeah, I know, I know. Like, uh, oh. we, we see it a lot and I wish more people recommend it because I remember when I got started selling on Amazon, uh, I, I now check at the at the campaigns on this whole account and it's like, it says literally, literally it says freebies. That's all the campaign says. Like, I, I don't know it. if it's an auto campaign. <laughs> I don't know if it's a product targeting campaign, a category targeting campaign. I don't know what, what match. <laughs> like, what, what is the strategy? Are we targeting category keywords, competitor branded keywords? Mm -hmm. uh, you, so if I would, if I, if I, I would have loved that somebody would tell me, you got to do frisbees, then uh, category keywords, then uh, phrase so that you know the match time you're targeting you don't have and you don't have to go inside each campaign so it's extremely basic but also extremely important and when you want to scale when you want to invest more money and you want to do it the right way again ppc is one of those tools you want to use to uh increase sales in time in, in seasonal times because it is uh it is the go-to tool to do that like you yep. you amazon will probably remove like uh external traffic they could they could even um forbidden like rebates but ppc will always be there so the best the the best structure you have to go ahead and increase uh or decrease uh, uh, slow down on on any strategy that's not working for you um the easiest and smoothest it will it'll be for you to to go ahead and make and uh, make changes yeah definitely yeah, and learn from us to, <laughs> if you're one of those people that that has a name that, that has a campaign named frisbee don't worry i got you we, we were you at one point <laughs> so yeah 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 <laughs> been there done that yeah yeah and yeah hopefully you're going to take a, a good listen here all right so we were talking about having the three campaigns or having the campaign set up and at this point okay what's the next thing that you're going to be aware of as we were saying okay you're going to budget for this how much would you, would you budget for this are these experimental campaigns are these like you clearly know that this should work campaigns or how how would you go about that all right so up to this point since we picked three asins right mm -hmm. we yeah. should have a total of six campaigns Correct. three is sponsored products campaigns and three sponsor display campaigns, considering that we're going to target uh, the product detail page of these competitors. Now, if we want to talk a little bit more, more about strategy, like we could launch a sponsor brands product targeting as well, because it is, it's now available within, mm -hmm. within the product detail pages. So that would give us nine campaigns in total. That's when this is when it starts getting bigger because we we started just with nine, with three A's in the, right, and now we have nine campaigns. Like how is how is that possible? Well, Amazon has different uh, ad types available where they could show up your product, um, and 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 we could even dive in on video as well. So that would be twelve. But let's let's keep it short. Let's keep it only with sponsored products and sponsored display. 
Uh, I would not call this a test campaign because if we used a extremely relevant search term and uh, we got the top three results for that uh, relevant search term, we really know what we're doing and we could be aggressive. But again, we have seen that CPC is lower for product targeting than for keyword targeting. So I don't think it's necessary to be aggressive with the bidding. Um, and I would start low and what, what comes next? I would probably set each campaign budget at probably 10 to $20, depending on, on how, on how, uh, on how confident we are that, that things will pick up. And I would start with, uh, really low bits. So I would go for maybe, uh, for, for a sponsored display, I would do something around the 20 to 30 cents range. And for on a sponsored products, I would do something from, uh, 10 to 20 cents range. Mm -hmm. And if I don't see any impressions, which is which it's where where we get to the troubleshooting stage, because usually what happens is you hear this strategy mm -hmm. and you launch the campaign, but you forget about it. And then when you take a look at it, nothing happened. Right. Mm -hmm. So and if, we, if we want our, this, if we want these campaigns to work, I would take a look at it uh, maybe every day for at least the first five days to see if I'm getting impressions and clicks. If on day one, we're getting impressions and we're getting clicks, I would let the campaign, the campaign go. I wouldn't touch it. But if by the first uh, 48 hours, we don't have any impressions or clicks, I would go ahead and increase the bids by, let's say 25% uh, mm -hmm. and, and see if, because I want to see where the CPC in those sponsored product, product carousels are without necessarily paying the highest bid. So if you really want to take care of your, of each dollar that goes to, to, to Amazon, I would start slow and then um, intentionally increase in bits if I'm not seeing the impressions and clicks I would like to. Uh, then maybe 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 you have a, a different scenario. Maybe uh, you launch campaigns and by the next 24 hours you have already spent fifty dollars. Well, fifty dollars is probably too much for the budgets we said, but let's say you have already spent uh, twenty dollars and you're checking your campaign by the next day and you are already out of budget. Wow, that. <laughs> something happened there that, that 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 it's good for you because you're getting all of this exposure but there is definitely some troubleshoot to get done if you haven't seen conversions mm -hmm. so if you haven't seen conversions and you have already run out of budget twice i would go ahead and check what the cpc is if you got uh those results at a let's say a 20 cents bid and your cpc is around 11 cents i would try i would try to lower it to match the cpc so that you keep getting clicks maybe uh that cpc or lower and see if at some point you convert because as we discussed we were we're likely to see conversions lower than on than on keyword targeting so it would be normal that we don't convert in the first 10 20 even 30 clicks but if we're getting a 11 cent cpc once we get a sale for 19.99 49.99 that the, everything is going to go upside down and we will see uh, the numbers start trending um that's what that's what i would do yeah yeah that's really great. and i love everyone listening and watching please like take a very close listen <laughs> to what gabriel was saying because <laughs> learn from us for example i how i learned this i haven't done that i haven't started with a small budget let's say a 10 percent uh, a 10 cent uh, bid I went straight down, okay, $2. I want to see where, where they show up, you know? And that's a sure way for you to burn a ton of money. Yes, the data is going to be there very fast, but it's also like, it's an upside down there. So I would definitely recommend this. Gabriel was saying, start small and see where are you converting. And based on that, you can also, as he was mentioning about ACOS, you can see where your ACOS is. So then you can strategize better, I would say. I just complimented you like twice, third time, three times. <laughs> So well done. <laughs> couldn't couldn't have said it better. Yeah, and if and if, yeah, I mean, if I would give more context, like on what I do on a daily basis, sometimes I'll go ahead and and do the two dollar bit. But we have products that you know are have like I don't know, we just have a product that that uh, went above the a hundred thousand reviews. <laughs> so on that product, I, I I can allow myself to go ahead and be three dollars on competitor uh, product detail pages because it just makes sense to do it, right? I I. I we wouldn't we wouldn't be an advertising agency if we wouldn't do the stuff like that 
But yeah. if if we're starting from scratch and the product is is building momentum and uh, every dollar, it's extremely important because cash flow and how you manage your cash is important on any, on every Amazon business. Um, we we have to do this. We have to take these baby steps first, so that uh, over time we 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 are beating two dollars on our competitor product detail pages. Yeah, correct. I, I love that. Uh, something that I noticed, and I also like curious to see your opinion about, because we are talking about product targeting, and yes, truly, it's about brand analytics, but also it's product targeting. Have you noticed at the latest? I think two weeks or so on um, product targeting um, ads cost rise very, very high, especially when you're targeting your own products. Yeah, so these can go up and down depending on the season and uh, what is your competitor's approach. So what 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 I've seen lately, and I have this extremely fresh in my mind because it happened recently, uh, and, uh, and I'm probably getting a little in the weeds here, but I hope that if you're listening and you've been following the, the podcast today. No doubt, no doubt. Today it's PPC day. I don't care. I love PPC. Let's go. Yeah, my, my, my nerd is coming out right now. So, it's fine. Let's geek. Um, I have this case on an account right now. Uh, you know these new sponsor products, a search term impression share report? Yes. So it tells you what is your market share on each search term, right? Mm -hmm. If you, Like how many, how many of the impressions you own for that search term. So we have this keyword, let's say the keyword is toothpaste, where we were dominating up to 80%, not, not 80%, maybe 60% of the impressions uh, for, on, on, with a sponsored brand's headline ad and with sponsored products placements. Uh, and recently, well, not recently, maybe two months ago, we starting we starting to see that we starting to see that that was decreasing. So we went from like four hundred thousand impressions per month on that on that uh, on that term to two hundred thousand, and we saw that reflected on the impression share. Uh, so we went down around from sixty percent to like thirty seven, and then by the next month we were down again from uh, from two hundred thousand to a hundred thousand, and our impression share was ten percent. Wow. And uh, what that means is just competitors are being way more aggressive for category keywords, and they're trying to not just outbid you, but but because this is this is a, a case where uh, this is a case where competitors have just deep pockets to go ahead and get you out of that keyword. Um, so we're currently struggling with that. We're, we this month we started to get we started to get some uh, market share back, which is great. Um, and I would not get into a bidding war depending on the season we're in. So what that means is uh, toothpaste is probably evergreen, but let's say we are on toys and everyone is like, everyone is raising their bids, which makes no sense right now. We're on August 17th. Is, is it the 17th? Yeah, August 17th. This is not the right time to go ahead and raise bids on the, on the toys category. It doesn't make sense, right? But what it would make sense is, okay, this competitor is going aggressive. I'm not going to go ahead and fight him because that's not really what I want. But I believe I have a better, uh, I, I, I believe I offer more value than him or her. Uh, I'll go ahead and target the, comp the this ASIN product detail page so that I get sales from the traffic he doesn't convert on. So that Brilliant. takes us back to... That takes us back to brand analytics because you can see that based on his the, 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 this person aggressiveness, they can have up to uh, forty percent of the click share. But if the conversion share is five percent, that just means that ninety five percent of people that click on that product don't buy that product. Mm -hmm. They buy any any well, not anything else, but potentially something else that is within the product detail page, and that could be potentially you. If you are following that and you are uh, and you are um, and you are aware that this guy is being aggressive, he might have a ton of the click share because of how aggressive he's being. But if he doesn't really offer value, if he is just like Carlos says, another me too product, yeah. he's not he's not going to convert. You will see that reflected on brand analytics, and you could potentially uh, jump on this days in without bidding three dollars win uh, sponsored products placements, sponsored display placements, sponsored brands placements. You can also do sponsored brands product targeting and get some sales from there. That's that's what it, what, what it looks like. And don't try to get it on a bidding war. I'd rather uh, bid it smartly than aggressively because uh, you can see, you can also see competitors run out of budget at a certain time in the day. And maybe that's where you're, when, when your ads pick up, uh, start picking up. 
Yeah. Well, Gabriel is just like dropping golden nuggets, just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, really, really that good. That was a mic drop right there. Yeah. <laughs> mic drop, whatever it was like. Yeah, that's brilliant. And this, uh, I love that you were also mentioning, hey, it's not just like, okay, they are taking the impression, the impression share, but yeah, you might not have enough budget or to for for the PP, uh, for the CPC, you might not have enough, like as you were saying, some have big budget, some don't, you know. So here yeah. is super super important to know. Look, I have to outsmart. It's not money. It's not only money. Let's put it that way. You have to outsmart people. And once, as Gabriel was saying, hey, I have to understand. Look, there are like lots of people who are going to their WhatsApp to their page, but. I'm thinking website. I'm look, I'm working on my website. Sorry, <laughs> brain. So um, on their product page, you know, they are going to their product page, but it's not converting still, you know. So this is super super important to understand. And yet again, brand analytics here. Well, here it's the super value of brand analytics. You understand those things, and you see those things, and you can act on those things. So brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. I, I can I can add. Can I add something there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just so everyone knows that I'm not that rude. Gabriel and I, when we started the uh, the chat before, like re recording, he was like, "Okay, I had this presentation, and it was like, yeah, you prepared the presentation." He was like, "No, no, I was joking, you know." And then, it was messy with me. And yeah. yeah, so that's still like I think it carried around still like it's the same like we're just playing around. So please, yes, go on, share. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Do you still remember I'm, what you wanted to say? I do, I do. Yeah, good, good, good. I, I just wanted to say because when you were mentioning that, I just, I just remember that, I just remember what our context looks like right now, and and it doesn't look uh, pretty much like what it looked five years ago. Today, mm -hmm. we have a lot of aggregators in the space mm -hmm. who are willing to invest millions of dollars to rank products using PPC. So you will want to as as Naomi said, be way smarter than them because they don't have you as an entrepreneur or you as a business owner uh, taking care of things. They might have um, uh, somebody that's in charge of several accounts and you're just taking care of your account specifically. So you can, you, I think you can be more uh, way smarter putting in the time and dedication to go ahead and, and make sure that you follow what is going on in the marketplace. And sometimes that takes you maybe 15 to 30 minutes to take a look at, at you know your top keywords and what does it look like on the marketplace because yes we follow ppc we take a look at business reports we take a look at the dashboard you're using but sometimes we don't we don't put put in the time to take a look at the context what what does it look like in the marketplace are they changing the app types are they moving where sponsored brands video should be I think stuff like that can give you an advantage over these people that yes they have tons of money in the world but that doesn't mean they can pay a hundred dollars per click like it's just right. not gonna happen and they also have like a daily budget because yeah you know? yeah yeah that's true yeah. the bigger the brand the more strict they're with the budget like they, they they will always come with stuff like hey we only have this amount for the month so if by the 28th they don't have more budget it's like we're not gonna run any more ads and uh, you can potentially bid them on the on the rest of the month. Maybe maybe watch out for that in your category. You might have one or two big players that play that game. They don't manage it well, and then the last two days you you might not see them running ads. But it's because they just they just they just are they just are religiously following the the budget they had for the month, and, and they didn't manage it well. Yeah, definitely. Gabriel, is there anything that I should have asked about brand analysis if I haven't? Uh, I think we have covered pretty much everything definitely um i would love for people listening that they would dive a little deeper on the rest of metrics that brand analytics has available uh, especially if you're looking to build your audience outside of amazon if you're looking to you know even if you're looking to like write emails now that store store amazon stores is attached to posts and you can get uh, you can get followers through your storefront based on the posts you do we're completely out of brand analytics now but what I mean is you can use brand analytics to take a look at the demographics, you know, see what gender, age, and uh, what marital status, yeah, what kind of people are, are purchasing your products. So when you write to them, you are you intentionally write to that audience and you are not just write, writing an email to this following um, being being just someone else, right? 
Yeah. It, I, I, I'm pretty sure you would not talk the same way you would talk to a police officer than you would talk to a pregnant mom, right? Yeah. They, they, it's just not the same. So there is a lot more to capitalize on um, brand analytics. For now, we've just covered one of, I think it's two, six different things that are available on brand analytics. Uh, but this is this is the topic where I could um, add the most value. So that's why we didn't, we didn't go any deeper on, on the rest. Yeah, definitely. Loved it. Very, very thorough, very like super, super good. And as I was saying, you just truly like dropped golden nuggets, which I hope that <laughs> our listeners are going to value because it's like super valuable. Um, to be super respectful of your time, a few questions that I love to ask my guests before leaving and before wrapping up, because we are actually not leaving. We're just going to go to do our own stuff. <laughs> um, yes. If you could choose one superpower, which would be it? If I could choose one superpower, I just listened to Adam Hayes episode and he said something about uh, inventory, inventory, no, yeah, shipping prices. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, that's like a great superpower, but uh, um, I would say my, my, my Amazon superpower would be to have unlimited lightning deals and just get the opportunity to show products on Amazon's homepage nonstop. Um, why? Because uh, besides PPC, deals increase your CTR and conversion rate. So mm -hmm. they boost your your best seller rank and uh, they help you build a lot more momentum, especially when um, seasons like Q4, Black Friday, Cyber Monday events are just around the corner. So I would, I would probably choose that superpower. That's brilliant. <laughs> and you were totally like nerding out, like totally CPC. <laughs> CPC, oh God, it's so many like shortenings. Okay, PPC expert, there you go. <laughs> Finding my words. Today I'm a mess. Wait, I'm usually not like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so, and I also appreciate a lot that you were listening to the episode with Adam Heist. He's brilliant and yeah, it's great that you listened as well. He's a guy, he's a guy to look up to, yeah. Definitely. Um, what purchase or what, what investment did you recently make that was $50 or less that helped you up your game when it comes to brand analytics? $15 or less? Five zero fifty dollars or less. Oh, uh, thanks to Carlos, I'm taking Alpha Bring now. Uh, oh, right. I'm testing it, okay? I'm testing <laughs> it. We'll see. I used it today before the podcast. I think mm -hmm. it went pretty well. It helped me. It helped me. Uh, it helped me. It helped me. <laughs> I don't know. He's in a good mood, so I would say he it, he was helped. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Carlos, this is a shout out for you too because he's like all the time like people don't believe him <laughs> that the, the alpha brain actually helps him. So there you go. Gabriel is considering your advice. All right, <laughs> no more too much fun in this episode. All right, so uh, three favorite books and why do you love them? Three favorite books. Wow, that's a lot of books. Um, I I rather do audio than actually read. Okay. Um, but um, my my first book, and I always recommend this to anybody who's uh, trying to get started in e-commerce, especially if you're gonna sell physical products. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna do like services, like that, that, that's fine. But if you're gonna sell on Amazon or sell physical products or set up your Shopify store, I have it right here, right right beside me because I like I really like it. It's Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. You wouldn't believe how similar your story as an Amazon seller can be to this guy. Because this guy uh, faced, you know, inventory issues, he faced shortage issues, he faced, he faced cash issues, he faced everything you can go through as an Amazon seller or as an mm -hmm. e-commerce seller or as a business owner selling physical products. So I totally, I. I totally recommend it. I've read it at least three times, uh, uh, two two times when I was managing my private label business, and once and once again now that I'm part of Better AMS, just to get back and take a look at uh, how does it feel to be on the other side? Because now nowadays what I do is run ads, but I've been on both sides and I know what it feels like. And Phil Knight is helping me get get back in those shoes again. That's uh, the other two, like really. It, it really depends if you want to go uh, more aggressive on, on, on a business focus. Scaling Up, it's a really great book. I like it. Scaling Up by whom? Say that again. Scaling Up by whom? Um, uh, uh, I, 
I don't remember. <laughs> it's fine. I'll find it. But what is it yeah. about? <laughs> so, so, so the book is about setting the, the goals for your company for the next five to 10 years. Uh, for people that are young and are just getting started, uh, we usually don't have the, a good idea of how a business should look like. And we're just thinking, you know, six months from now, 12 months from now, that book actually helped me, uh, think about what, what is, what, how do I see the company five years from now? And I stumbled upon not knowing what was going to happen five years from now. So that book helped me, helped me set goals, helped me set, um, what, what we wanted to achieve, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, another really good one that the team recommended was Atomic Habits. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say the third one is going to be the 5 a.m. Club from Robin Sharma, just because I mean you can do you, you can be part of my club and be the and be on the 6 a.m. Club instead. Uh, <laughs> but I want the uh, 8 8 a.m. Club. By the way, I also have a club, not just you. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on, go on. Uh, but it's, it's not about the time you wake up it's about uh the things you do up uh, right when waking up religiously that set you up for the day mm -hmm. that's that's where the difference is so if you want to if you want to join OMIS or my club uh feel free and that book is that book can help you um uh understand why that is important for the rest of your day Brilliant. Thank you so, so much. And apologies for like, while you were talking, I was just, if you're watching the video, I was just like all over the place. My battery wasn't charging and I'm like, oh my God, oh. I need to find the plug. And it's like, finally I found it. So everything is fine. I'm back. I confirmed that. <laughs> w, it was an awesome pleasure to have you on the show and you are truly a wealth of knowledge. Um, the last question, how can people get a hold of you? Say hello, ask more about battery MS, ask more about you, about your company, about whatever, just ask you about things. Of course, of course. Well, first, thank you so much for having me. I always appreciate um, the opportunity to share what I have on my head, because it's, as you can see on the PPC front, it's just a lot. <laughs> uh, and I could go on for a few hours, but uh, you, you also have other, th other things to do. I do have other things to do. It's fun, uh, we can have other podcasts, like you can, can be on other episodes. <laughs> <four episodes. laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the best way to reach out to me would probably be uh, LinkedIn. I'm there a lot, uh, mm -hmm. just adding, trying to add value to the LinkedIn community every day. And Instagram and Facebook as well. Uh, same same name that you see on the podcast, Gabriel Caceros. And I'm happy to answer any any anyone's questions. So you don't have to reach out just purely for business. I feel free to reach out for any questions you might have on the e-commerce space. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. It was brilliant to have you on the show and I certainly hope that I have you back. It was a super interesting topic and I hope that you listeners and how do you say, how do you call the people who are watching? Watchers? Watchers? <laughs> viewers. Viewers. <laughs> viewers. <laughs> there you go. You lovely audience. You know, today it was a very like, I was all over the place and I hope that you still love me for that. <laughs> So thank you so, so much, lovely audience, for being here. And thank you, Gabriel, once again for your time. Take care, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Bye. It was fun sharing this episode with you. If you found value in what you've heard, please show your love with a subscribe, rate, and review of the show. Until next time.